Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you more about the cross-aldol reaction. In the last video, I shared that in a cross-aldol reaction where you have two different aldehydes, there are multiple products. In fact, there are four different products that can form because each aldehyde is capable of being both the nucleophile and the electrophile. And that's not very helpful. So fortunately, there are a couple of solutions to this problem, and I'm going to share them. For example, um, I'm sorry, for, stuff. for example, what if we really only wanted this aldol product that I have got in the box? Uh, this is the aldol product when butanol was the nucleophile and propanol is the electrophile. So I'm going to copy here. Right? I want butanol as my electrophile, or butanol as my nucleophile, propanol as the electrophile. If you're looking at this and trying to sort that out, the nucleophile is the thing that comes that contain that still has the carbonyl group as part of its aldol structure, and uh, the electrophile is the one that becomes the alcohol. So I can draw my uh, draw my squiggly line and get my electrophile and nucleophile on appropriate places. Okay. So these are the things that I want to be my nucleophile and electrophile, and I need to set up a reaction so that I guarantee that. One, the butanol is the nucleophile and, and propanol is the electrophile. I can't do that using sodium ethoxide as base, but I can do that if I choose a stronger base and therefore I can control uh, I can control the reaction by order of addition. So how does that work? Let me show you. what we are going to do is we're going to take one butanol, which we want to be our nucleophile. We're going to deprotonate one butanol using LDA, sodium hydride, something that's an appropriately strong base. So sodium or lithium diisopropyl amide is going to deprotonate one butanol completely. Right. Now that this is done, I have It's something that is a nucleophile only. Then we can add to the reaction one propanol as electrophile only. And if we do this addition right, we can avoid any sort of acid base equilibration. And, and, and that's actually a, a concerning topic, but I'm going to not cover it in any great detail here. And so by order of addition, we deprotonate all of the thing we want to be our nucleophile. We add all of our, the, the electrophile second, we can control which product is likely to be the major product. Another thing that we can do is we can control the outcome of this reaction by the role of the carbonyl group. Uh, so what we are looking for are things that are nucleophilic only, or at least better nucleophiles than they are electrophiles, and things that are electrophilic only. Oh wait, oof. Uh, and I'm actually going to start with the electrophilic only category. Things that are electrophilic only uh, are aldehydes that, for example, have oops, I will use formaldehyde. No alpha hydrogens that can be deprotonated, and therefore you can't make that they can't become enolate anions. So other examples besides um, formaldehyde include this molecule with a tart butyl group, this pivaldehyde. Uh, it includes um, benzaldehyde, 
struggling there for a moment to remember benzaldehyde, benzaldehyde, and so on. Things that are have no alpha hydrogens. So uh, these are things that can be electrophiles only. There are some other combinations of things. Uh, so I'm trying to think. There's like one other thing that's sticking in my brain, and I feel bad because I'm not remembering it. Uh, but these kinds of things are electrophiles only. Things that are nucleophiles only. Ketones. A ketone makes something that is a good nucleophile. It is less electrophilic because of the extra alkyl groups, both for steric reasons and electronic reasons. Alkyl groups are electron donating. Uh, ketone, you know, they are also sterically hindered. So ketones make good nucleophiles and not so good electrophiles. Uh, other examples of things that are nucleophile or that are significantly better nucleophiles than they are electrophiles include esters. And the, the sort of reaction between esters and uh, aldehydes and ketones and, uh, will come up again later. But generally, you could deprotonate this ester, and it's going to be a nucleophile more likely than an electrophile. And then finally, and this is the last example I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show just some, some productive examples. These 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds can be nucleophiles only because they're much more acidic. So let's let me do two quick examples. And I'm going to use... Uh, I'm going to use a ketone, and uh, we'll do benzaldehyde. If we use this combination of compounds, the ketone is the only thing that can be the nucleophile. And um, you know, so let's just use let's use LDA, and we're going to follow that up with we actually need. A, aqueous workup because we otherwise don't have a proton source. Ketone is the only thing that can be the nucleophile, so acetone gets to be the nucleophile, and we get benzaldehyde is the only thing that can be the electrophile, and you get the outcome you want. Uh, the, other, the other kind of way to do it is we could use, say, our 1,3-diketone here. And, oh, let's use formaldehyde because I want to. The 1,3-diketone is significantly more acidic. Remember, this pKa is around 10. The, the aldehydes, other aldehydes and ketones are around, uh, you know, 20 we can pretty much guarantee that we're going to get deprotonation of the 1,3 diketone, and we're only going to have formaldehyde as, a, uh, as an electrophile. So this, this is kind of the, the way to go about this. So either by controlling addition, so deprotonating one compound and then adding the second compound, the electrophile second, or by using things that you like choosing things based on their role. Some compounds are much better nucleophiles than they are electrophiles, and some uh, aldehydes can't be electrophiles because they don't have alpha hydrogens. All right, this wraps up my video on, on crossed aldol condensations. Thank you for watching.